This game was only about a half hour old, and Aaron Rodgers already called it one of his greatest memories ever as a football player. How remarkable was what you saw last night out of Aaron Rodgers? It was very remarkable. I, I, I was beyond impressed. Like, the price of admission at Lambeau Field was well worth it. I mean, when you saw him go down, the team was deflated. The fans were back into last season reminded of what the season looked like. Everything kind of just went out the window. He comes back, and what he said in that interview was what I thought about. Number one, Aaron Rodgers is so competitive, but he mentioned Brett Favre. When you, when you sit behind a guy who never misses a snap, mm -hmm. like he is always there, you're driven, your competitive nature is molded completely different. Like, Aaron Rodgers, after going down last year and then going down this first week of the season, first – like, he had to be thinking, I can't – there's no way I can allow this to happen again. Two years in a row, me basically missing the entire season, I have to be able to come back out here and give my team a boost. What impressed me the most as far as his play is we always get enamored with – the way he is accurate outside the pocket, the way he can extend the plays, the way he's just, just blows your mind outside the pocket. Aaron Rodgers, when he is, when he has to be a pocket passing quarterback, is the best pocket passing quarterback in the NFL. There's no mm. question about it. He's so precise. He gets rid of the ball so quickly. I, it, it, he turned into a completely different player. And because he didn't he have was his limited. mobility. He was yep. clearly limited. Yes, he was limited. And he he was they did a great job in the broadcast of showing how he just looked differently when he was dropping back. And he had to do it all upper body. And he still can throw a 50 yard rope to Geronimo Allison. Special. Couldn't have handed it to him any better. And by the way, credit to Allison, especially the receiver out Absolutely. here, because he yep. made a heck of a play. Yep. As good of a pass as it was, that was still a contested catch. But how do you, this is across the field. It's 50 yards vertically, but it's another 30 yards horizontally. Like, <laughs> you guys can draw the triangle and figure out what the hypotenuse is. Like, that's, how many yards did like, that go in the air? Was that 75 yards in the air? Like, do you see I'm, where the ball placement is, though? Like, I, I, this is, you know what that throw reminded me of? That drill we see him do where they throw it into the, the trash can. Yeah. And it was, I mean, that's, it was dropping it in the bucket. I think the Favre note is a great one because let's keep in mind, e e even once the test came back right, after missing last year with an injury, he's, they're down 17 nothing at halftime. They're down 20 nothing before they get the ball back in the second half. It would not have been unreasonable to say, you know what? It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be compromised. I'm more likely to get injured playing in this game. Seriously, either the knee hurt again or because I can't move and Khalil Mack is terrorizing everyone. What if Khalil Mack Anthony bars me because I can't move? 20 nothing with 25 minutes left. The game's over. Like, let me pack this one in. It'll be a good story that I can come play next week against Minnesota, a team I'm going to have to be fully operational right. for. But instead, and I wonder how much the Favre stuff was instructional for him. Like, that was, it was a all-time performance from a player who never ceases to amaze. Well, what I get from the soundbite and listening to him after the game is just insight into how he was feeling when he was knocked out of last year and just him wanting to take that next step in terms of ownership and accountability. You heard him during the training camp when he was talking about the young players not giving a good look on the scout team. This is a different Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. that we're seeing now, and I think that's because he's had an opportunity to reflect being away from the game due to injury last season uh, on how important it is to him, but how important for him it is to set the standard for everybody else yep. in the organization and all of the players. I think they're trying to take it to another level, and Aaron Rodgers is looking at his career mortality and saying, I don't have that much longer with this, with this group and playing at this kind of level. I've got to be able to take advantage of these gifts 
and we've got to try to win now. There's more urgency in what he's doing, and you can hear it in his voice. And now by him doing what he did last night, coming back into the game, Nick, as you mentioned, where it wouldn't have been outside of the realm of possibility for Mike McCarthy to hold him out. I think now that shows everybody on that team, this is what we're going to be about, and this is the standard now. If I can do it, everybody else is expected to do it. We're not handling anybody with kids' gloves. We've got a mission that we're trying to accomplish, and this is how you need to be accountable to the rest of your teammates. Look, it all worked out great, and he did come out and have an incredible comeback, but were you surprised that McCarthy threw him back in because if he, I don't know, hurt himself further, if Khalil Mack got to him again, if something went awry and he turns out that tests were not as good as they were because he re-damaged his knee, I think a lot of people feel like that would have been a terrible mistake. Well, Jenna, they were were talking about it in the broadcast, Collinsworth and everybody in the booth, they were saying that it, this is starting to get to the point where you wouldn't bring Aaron Rodgers back into the game. But the fact that he did come back, I think that's a testament to him. But also, I'm looking at the Chicago Bears, and I'm wondering why Vic Fangio didn't pressure Aaron Rodgers more. Why didn't you bring more blitzes, particularly in the middle of the pocket, force him to get off the spot? Because you know that he's compromised. He doesn't have the mobility that, that you saw in the first half. you got to be aggressive and try to go after him. I felt like they left the door open for Aaron Rodgers to mount that comeback. And that's just something that you look back on and you say, that's unacceptable. The Chicago Bears gave one away last night in Lambeau Field. I don't know um, if they gave one away or Aaron Rodgers took it from them. And, and this is why Mike McCarthy made the decision. And, and pretty much Aaron made the decision, I'm going back out there to play. Last year, I did a production meeting and I was talking to Mike McCarthy and he says, man, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he's, he's invaluable. Like, he, he allowed reality to really set in like, wow, this is, this is what life is like without an elite quarterback. Mm -hmm. So he experienced that last year. So it was a no-brainer. If Aaron says I can come back and play, uh, I, I experienced losing and not having an opportunity to win, not putting my team in the best position, not being able to be afforded my entire playbook all of last year. So I, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna let him play. To your point, when it comes to the Chicago Bears and pressuring him, you can't pressure Aaron Rodgers because he's going to pick you apart. He's seen every blitz. So the moment you start to show, or you even try not to show, he's gonna catch you slip. That's what happened in the last way of the game. He just hits Randall Cobb on a quick little dunk, and and he does the rest. You, a quarter, a great quarterback, you can't really blitz and attack him it, when he can be mobile, get it, he wasn't. But when he gets the ball out as quickly as Aaron Rodgers, it's nothing you can really do. I, I agree with you, Greg, but I'm going to say this. You were up by 17 points going into the fourth you have, quarter. So you have to I give, you, I give you a touchdown to knock your quarterback down again. Because, because yes. I'm trying to knock you out of the game. I, That's what I'm going to do. I can afford to give up a big play if that means if putting Kaiser's Aaron Rodgers back on the in. ground again. If Kaiser's coming back in, I give, I give you the, – the, the, <laughs> they would have just given him 14 points. <laughs> yes. if, I mean, listen, you can, if Kaiser's going to play the rest of it. Aaron Rodgers took the field with 9-14 left in the third quarter because the Bears got the ball to start the second half, drove, long drive, got a field goal. In that moment, they were down 20 to nothing. He knew he was going to have to touch the ball at best four more times. You were going to have to score at least 21, probably more. Field goal, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. He touched it a fifth time to take knees and game over. In those drives, he was 17 of 23 for 270 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, and picked everyone apart yes. on a bum leg. <laughs> like, that is make-believe stuff. And for him to do it, and by the, the moment Allison came down with that touchdown, I think all of us watching were like, this, this dude going to do this, right? Yeah. Like, my only concern was, would the defense get the stops? And the defense almost let up at the very end, but thanks to some unfortunate for the Bears play calling at the end, they let him off the hook, and now you're down six. You're down six, and Rodgers has the ball. If I didn't check the live odds in, like, online betting, but I bet you down six with the ball, the Packers were the favorites in that game. That's only the case with him and Brady. That's it. Every other quarterback in the league, they're significant underdogs. It is a pleasure to watch this guy. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.